So, let us talk about one echo sensitive zones. Recently, Supreme Court issued an order, Indian Supreme Court issued an order saying that a one kilometer, at least one kilometer eco sensitive zone should be established around all protected areas, wildlife sanctuaries. and national parks. Okay, at least one kilometer echo sensitive zone should be created around all protected areas, wildlife sanctuaries and national parks. Okay. Now, there are some national parks where already the echo sensitive zones are up to 10 kilometers. Supreme Court is not asking to reduce that 10 to 1. Supreme Court is saying if it is not there, the minimum requirement is 1. If in some places it is more than that, perfectly fine. We are not going to change that. We are not reducing it. Supreme Court is insisting that at least 1 kilometer eco sensitive zone should be there around this. So, this was given by the judgment was given by a 3 judge Supreme Court bench. So, this order came uh, when uh, Supreme Court is considering a case related to the Nilgiri forest in Tamil Nadu. But the Supreme Court enlarged the scope and ordered that this should be implemented across the country. Supreme Court. enlarge the scope, implemented this across the country. Now, this has raised many concerns uh, in many states, especially in Kerala and all. According to the protesters, the protest, immediately protest started. The claim is the wildlife sanctuaries in Kerala alone is 8 lakh acres. And if one kilometer eco sensitive zone ESZ is implemented, then it will be covering almost 4 lakh acres. It will cover almost 4 lakh acres and it will be covering many human settlements, farmlands, etc. It will cover human settlements farmlands, etc. So, that is the context. Now, what is this eco sensitive zone? That is the question, what is it? So, these are the ecologically fragile areas, okay, eco sensitive zones are ecologically ecologically fragile areas around or uh, around 10 kilometers of protected areas, national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, etc. Ecologically fragile areas around up to 10 kilometers of protected areas, national parks, and wildlife sanctuaries. So, who is uh, authorized to notify this ecologically sensitive zones? Huh? Ah, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Abhi do ek bada in ministry hai. This is Ministry of Environment, Forest and CC. M O E F C C. 
environment forest and climate change government of india can notify okay ministry of environment forest and climate change government of india can notify the and eco sensitive zones eco sensitive zones in fact if in some places if it is more than 10 kilometers that also can be notified by ministry only okay ministry of government of india can notify it can be even extended beyond it can be extended beyond 10 kilometers also if required What is the idea behind the whole thing? It is a fragile zone. It is not the core area. It is outside the core area, but it is fragile. So, the idea is to regulate certain activities. The idea is to regulate certain activities around the national parks and all. Also, to minimize the negative impact of such activities, to minimize, to regulate, re regulate certain activities and to minimize the negative impact of such activities. So, according to this uh, concept of eco sensitive zone, activities are divided into three types, three types of activities. Eco sensitive zone activities are divided into three. One prohibited activities. which you cannot do in an eco sensitive zone including commercial mining sawmills industries causing pollution industries causing pollution no major hydroelectric power projects no major hydroelectric power project HEPs. Then commercial use of wood, okay. So, these are some of the activities there and also uh, you know uh, tourism which can destroy the ecosystem. Tourism is not prevented, but like you know hot air balloons type activities, big, big things and which can have a you know definite impact on the local ecosystem, uh, you know high end uh, you know uh, tourism. When I say high end tourism, it is more to do with more investment, more construction, uh, you know such activities which can destroy the local ecosystem. They are not talking about preventing tourism, but it should be eco-friendly tourism, okay. So, prohibited activities. Number two, regulated activities. Number two is regulated activities like felling of trees, establishment of hotels and resorts, regulated. They are not saying we are banning it. Regulation, hotels and resorts, then commercial use of natural water, commercial use of natural water, erection of electric cables, drastic change in agricultural system.
ओके ड्रास्टिक चेंज इन एग्रीकल्चरल सिस्टम बेसिकली यू नो लाइक यूजिंग हेवी टेक्नोलॉजी इन एग्रीकल्चर लार्ज स्केल पेस्टिसाइड्स बीइंग यूज्ड और मे बी यू नो एरियल स्प्रेइंग ऑफ पेस्टिसाइड्स ऑल दोज एक्टिविटीज सो ड्रास्टिक चेंज इन एग्रीकल्चर सो इट इज रेगुलेटेड रेगुलेटेड इज नॉट बैन ओके प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड रेगुलेटेड एक्टिविटी इज नॉट बैनिंग वी नीड टू हैव सम कंट्रोल सो दैट it is not affecting the fragile ecosystem that is number 2 number 3 it is permitted activities permitted activities the ongoing agriculture no ban on agriculture ongoing agriculture horticultural practices ongoing agri and horticulture practices rain water harvesting organic farming rain water harvesting organic farming then renewable energy sources green technology all these activities okay so no uh, ban on any of these things but fresh construction hotel tourism all these things some control restricted permitted and restricted okay so that is how it should be looked into so uh, the idea of the uh, the this uh, uh, ecologically sensitive zone is to create a shock absorbers to create shock absorbers so that better protection of the the forest and all can be there better protection of the forest and all can be there or also this ecologically sensitive zones will act as a transition zone eco sensitive zone should be act as a transition zone from areas of high protection to areas of low protection a transition zone from areas of high protection to areas of low protection so we want to create a buffer or a transition zone now the interesting thing is the environment protection act of 1986 that is the basis of all these things the environment protection act 1986 is the basis but this act is not mentioning about this ecologically sensitive zone not mentioning about it there is no mention about ecologically or ecological or eco sensitive zone no mention at all but how are we doing it then what is the legal basis of declaring eco sensitive zones by government of india so government of india is also relying on this environment protection act of 1986 in which there is section 32 section 3 brackets 2 it says that the central government can restrict certain activities central government can restrict certain activities and central government can ban certain activities around the protected zone around the protected zone okay so and in fact even uh, rule 51 
of the Environment Protection Rules 1986. See, when an act is passed, it is passed by the parliament. Then that act will be notified in the Gazette. And along with the notification, rules are also written down by the ministry. So, that rules are based on the act which was passed only. So, this Environment Protection Rules 1986, Rule 5.1 also talks about the government can prohibit certain activities, prohibit and restrict. The central government can prohibit and restrict certain activities. So, based on these two provisions, that means Rule 5.1 of the Environment Protection Rules 1986 and the Section 3.2 of the Environment Protection Act 1986, Central Government is empowered to declare such zones, okay, this eco sensitive zones can be declared or can be created by the central government, can be created by the central government. And these regulations were first, okay, it was first published in 2001 and subsequently modified in 2011, okay. The new guidelines came out in 2011, new guidelines in 2011. So, that is how this eco sensitive zones are there. Otherwise, in the Environment Protection Act 1986, there is no mention about this word eco sensitive zones, it is not there. But using these rules and sections, uh, the government is declaring it. Okay. Now, coming to an analysis, first of all, many environmentalists and policy activists, they have criticized this 3rd June 2022 Supreme Court judgment rule and act, that is what uh, the difference between rule and, and act is passed, then how is it implemented? That is through the rules prescribed by the government based on that act. Suppose you say, uh, you know, right to education act, right to education act is passed by the parliament, but parliament will not frame the rules, how exactly to be implemented, who will do, what you will do and all it will not be said. So, right to education act was passed in 2009, okay. Then, Ministry of Human Resource Development comes out with the rules based on this act, which is what is published in the, uh, you know, say or another simple example I can tell you, the parliament will pass a law saying that, you know, traffic should be restricted in certain areas to reduce pollution. Law is passed. Now, the local police station will come out of the rule saying that this road, there can be no parking, that road is one way. Otherwise, who declares a particular region is no parking? Who, who declares in your area? Tumhara ilaka mein aar kahin likha hai, no parking. Koon bana hai law? Who made the law? Huh? Parliament made the law. Tumhara kar ke bagal ka gali, gali number one, no parking. Parliament will huh? Administration. What is that administration called? Huh? Administration of one. IAS, IPS, yeah, uh, district collector. Who made the law that no parking? Huh? In a particular region. Board no parking. Niche kuch likha hai, by order, kya likha hai, SHO, traffic commissioner, jo bhi hai, local in charge of police is empowered 
to make implement that law by fixing the rules there. So, this is the some sort of called a delegation of power. Parliament made the law. The act was passed by the parliament, but it has to be implemented by the executive. So, the concerned executive based on the law, the law permitted the executive to make the final rules. So, that is the difference between this rule and act. Beyond that, do not think too much right now. Okay. So, Supreme Court, uh, the 3rd June Supreme Court judgment, it declared one kilo, at least one kilometer, you know, at least one kilometer as eco sensitive zone. But from where Supreme got this one kilometer? Why one kilometer? Why not 1.1 kilometer? Why not 900 meters? What is so great about one kilometer? So, this problem is many, you know, environmentalists and policy activists are complaining that this one kilometer restriction made by Supreme Court is unscientific. Are you getting this? There is no study done. Why one kilometer or why 500 meters or why it could have been any, any kilometer. They have you know at random just said okay one kilometer and there is no scientific basis for this one kilometer restriction number one. Okay. And number two, this one kilometer again did not address the topographic features. They did not address the topographic features. Meaning, see now if there is a mountain and this is fully forested, it is a protected zone. Now, whether the plain region surrounding that is to be treated as this eco sensitive zone, it may not be an eco sensitive zone, it is a totally different topography, it may not be required at all. Or say our Sundarbans Delta. It is a protected zone, it is a estuary, oh, sorry, it is a delta. Now, if you go by this logic, this one kilometer eco sensitive zone will go into the ocean. Is it an eco sensitive zone? Is, is, it, is it have anything to do with our, uh, you know, uh, Sundarbans delta? Nothing. So, these kind of things, the topography, that is what I am saying, the topography, the local conditions, the local geography should have been looked and then decided whether it is 1 kilometer or 2 kilometer or 5 kilometer, whatever it is. In some places, there may not be any requirement. You can have all activities in the ocean. That 1 kilometer restriction is not required at all if you are looking at, say, Sundarbans Delta region. So, the, we are saying topography, the, the experts are saying the topographical features should have been considered before deciding on this 1 or 2 kilometers, whatever it is. And number 3, these experts are saying this eco sensitive zone should be decided on a case to case basis. There cannot be a random or blanket, uh, you know, uh, rule that one kilometer is sacrosanct. There can be, say, in, in Thar Desert, Thar Desert is also an eco, it is a protected area. There may not be any, uh, you know, vegetation there. That, that is also an eco sensitive or protected area. And there, one kilometer is nothing. There may be 100 kilometers required for that. There may be that the, where the shifting of the sand dunes. There it may be 50 kilometers, we do not know. It has to be case to case basis. And a fourth point, according to experts, this should not be decided from the top. Okay. This should not be decided from the top. It should be based on participatory planning exercise.
okay it should be based on participatory planning exercise and number 5 many of these 1 km zones especially this eco sensitive zone which you are talking they have many low income housing colonies people may be living in that region then historical monuments then uh, livelihood areas i mean where people are living livelihood areas etc it has to be considered the bench rightly said no new permanent structure shall be permitted okay even the supreme court said that no new permanent structure but again case to case basis no new permanent structure can be constructed but again it should be on a it should have been on a case to case basis then another issue is many of these criticisms right now by the protesters and all it is because of misinformation because of misinformation and vested interest misinformation and vested interest even in kerala see eco sensitive zone did not stop agriculture it is not talking about any restriction on agriculture it is not talking about not restricting on tourism it is only said that there should be some you know control controlled tourism controlled construction controlled activity so that your ecosystem will be protected of course there can be flaws in that but the protests are protesters are talking about oh this if it is declared eco sensitive zone immediately uh, the government will be asking to stop agriculture stop animal husbandry nothing of that sort has been said in this there is nothing of that nature also so there is lot of misinformation and uh, it is being mi misusing the innocence of the people by vested interest and not only that many mining lobbies are involved in this sand mining lobby this coal mining lobby iron ore mining lobby in goa and all even quarrying quarries the quarrying lobby where you know blasting the rocks and all then using for that so quarrying so they have vested interest in not declaring the eco sensitive zone and of course in the end everything is politicized unfortunately in our country politicization of the issue what the final comment is protection of our ecosystem our natural habitat is a bare minimum requirement for our survival for the future this is for our survival for the future this is for our future generation the southern western ghats is one of the most uh, you know sensitive and under maximum ecological stress one big problem in southern western ghats it is mega biodiversity in the first place southern western ghats is part of mega biodiversity see uh, when this concept of mega biodiversity came across the world one among the top 12 one among the first 12 mega biodiversity maximum biodiversity even today when you read hindu newspaper 
you get news items saying that a new frog variety is identified species, a new butterfly. Even now, we have not even identified maybe half of the varieties available in this region. There is such massive uh, biodiversity is here. And this is also one of the most thickly populated regions in the world. Okay, our population density is also very high. Western side of Western Ghats, despite being a biodiversity, it is also very thickly populated. Population pressure is very high. So, the chance of destruction is also very high. So, we have to have a very, very, uh, you know, uh, futuristic uh, approach and Supreme Court or even the you know, various committees appointed, they are right, but again, it has to be practically implemented. Practical implementation is a big problem here, but one way you can do is there should be better communication, better dialogue and interaction with local community, with locals before implementing any protection measures. So, we need to take people into confidence, vested interest should be kept away, politicization should be avoided, dialogue should be there with the people, but the need of the hour is protection. If we are again, you know, if we are not protecting, uh, there may not be any western guards left or western guards will be there without any forest, without any biodiversity, maybe there after maybe 30, 40, 50 years, that is where we are moving. So. Uh, you know, protected zones are required, eco-sensitive zones are required, the lives and the livelihood of the people are also important, but there has to be a balance. This balance should come from understanding, dialogue, discussion and implementation of the program should be, uh, you know, uh, based on the participation of the people, the participatory approach. approach. Participatory approach should be followed. Our ultimate goal should be protection of the biodiversity and forest along with protection of the interest of the locals or the livelihood, livelihood of the people also. Okay, so write a question, what are eco-sensitive zones, eco-sensitive zones, question mark, critically examine the impact of environmental policies at the local level, impact of environmental policies at the local level and prospects of local participation in such policies. Okay, so just before I wind up, one question in between like, you know, if a rule is made and who will check the correctness of the rule? Ministry will make the rule. If they made a wrong rule, who will check that? Ah, judiciary, Supreme Court will check. Supreme Court, you can go to High Court and Supreme Court. Supreme Court will declare that rule invalid or rather unconstitutional if they have made something which is not what is said in the act passed by the parliament. And Supreme Court can also declare the act also invalid. If they feel that the act itself is violating the rights of the people, it can be declared unconstitutional. Okay, the so rules can be declared unconstitutional, even the act also can be declared unconstitutional. Okay, so I will stop here.